Hey, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. Now, last week I did a video on this little Bofang T1, this tiny little PMR radio, and since then I've had lots of questions about the radio and the programming software. So I thought maybe it's about time I revisited this and did a second video so I can explain a few things in better detail. Right, in this second video on the little uh, Bofang here, I'm gonna go through a few things I didn't go through on the first video. I've had a little bit more time to spend with the radio and uh, have finally got to grips with the programming software. And I'll go through that in a second because that's a little bit uh, sort of interesting. Um, been using, yeah, been using the radio a little bit more. I've now programmed it just with the eight PMR channels, which is uh, all, all I'm going to use. And uh, yeah, one of the questions that's been asked, there are quite a few questions coming on personal message and stuff like that. People are saying about the, uh, the scan feature. Could I demonstrate the scan feature? Well, yes, the radio does scan and very easy to do. You just hold down the little uh, torch button there, two seconds, and then the radio goes into uh, goes into scan mode. I don't know if you can see, you've got a little tiny flashing uh, LED on the top there to let you know. Um, and then when it picks up the signal, it obviously it will stop and it will monitor that channel. To stop scan mode, you just press the, uh, press the torch button again. Now, one thing I have found, which is what I, I, I did actually mention on the first video, again, it's the volume of the speaker the volume on, on the on the radio even with it set on its lowest setting it's still pretty loud and uh, what I tend to do is I have these sort of you know I have this radio on the windowsill or something just on a scan mode just to see if anything's going on around on the PMR and then when it does actually uh, receive it it comes up pretty loud it's quite it's quite invasive I would say compared to the UV5R where you can turn that right the way down and it's just in the background um, but that's what it is. I, I did look at on the internet on some of the uh, the mods that are available to reduce that volume. To be honest, it's going right inside the radio. You know, mucking about with little uh, surface mount stuff on the circuit board. It's beyond what I would attempt to do. Um, so, yeah, basically, basically that's that. So anyway, I'm just going to um, show you a little bit on the on the programming now. Just to go go over again what I said on the first video, you are going to need the proper Bofang programming cable for this to work. It's a prolific cable. It does have some form of chip in this part of the USB here. It won't work with the standard USB cable. Now, you know, once again, when, when you buy, if, if you decide to buy the radio, it's better to spend an extra couple of quid at the beginning and get the cable. Don't worry about the software, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But yeah, make sure you do get the programming cable because you won't be able to use the radio without the programming cable. There's no way you can program this radio without using your computer. Another thing, someone question asked on the display, can you, um, can you change the display to remove the frequency? No, there's no way I can see that you can mod the display. It is what it is. And yes, it does have a little S meter that goes up on the, uh, on the bottom there. Yeah, that's, you know, that's probably useful sort of in its own way. Anyway, as you can see, look, got been flicking through the owner's manual. Yeah, did get me scratching my head a little bit. So I'm gonna go through the programming. Now bear in mind that I'm out of my uh, comfort zone here with these radios. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an 11 metre CB radio guy. Um, this is only my second sort of PMR radio. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. So what you're going to see now is you're going to see me programming this from a complete layman's term. The first time I've ever used the software to program this radio. One final thing I want to mention is that another guy on YouTube, Lewis, whose YouTube site is Ringway Manchester, which you can go and look up. Now he's got himself one of these little radios. Now he is an expert 
on these PMR radios. He has absolutely got an absolute farm. <laughs> He's got dozens, of, it seems like dozens of these little PMR radios. And uh, I understand he's going to be uploading a video today where he's going to do some testing. And he told me that he's got two miles out of his little Bofang. Um, I don't know if that's back to his home base antenna or that's on another contact, but I believe he's, he's actually spoken to other people on the PMR band. And yeah, he got, he got two miles. Now, my, my test was, I thought, a three quarters of a mile, but uh, thanks to Richard, who came back and he did correct me, and he said, well, actually, I think I was just over the half mile. So, yeah, I, I didn't do so well on this, but uh, as I say, I, in, in, in the software, I do believe you can turn the power up or down. So uh, I did go into the software, which I'll show you in a minute, and uh, my radio was switched to high power, which I think is one watt, half a watt is, uh, is low power. So yeah, in, you know, around my QTH, my built up area, unfortunately, maybe half a mile is uh, all I can do, but people are getting better distances than me. I don't know why, could just be the area. Um, or, you know, or maybe they're set up, but uh, yeah, half a mile, you know, but it is what it is, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, not, a ch it's not an expensive radio, and uh, it's probably best to use, you know, close to your proximity of your QTH, things like that. It's not, it's not an amateur dual band uh, radio, it's more of a novelty, but it does work. Anyway, let me go on about the uh, software here, and I'll just explain to you how I got on from a layman's point of view. So, the radio that I received from Gary came with the official Bofang program DVD. So I thought, well, best have a start with that, have a look at that. So I opened that up and there appears to be a separate program for all the models of Bofang radios and that looks quite good. But it's not until you open one of these that you realise that all of the menus and all of the uh, instructions are all in Chinese. So that isn't particularly helpful. The good news is, is that the software that you need, which is Bofang 9100, is freely available on the internet and you can download that and thankfully everything is in plain English. However, when I plugged the T1 into the computer, unfortunately the software refused to communicate with the radio, so it's quite apparent that I was missing something. So as ever, over to YouTube to find a solution, and I did, and a guy named Chris Andrews very kindly put up a review, but more importantly, links to software and drivers in his description. Sure enough, it seems that you need a dedicated prolific USB driver to get the cable to work. So I downloaded that and that went quite sort of smoothly. And thankfully, when I plugged the little Bofang in the next time, the very familiar USB little pop-up appeared telling me that all the software was configured and working, so that was good. So then I restarted the 9100 software. This time around, I was rather pleased and relieved that the software did in fact talk to the radio and I was able to drag across all the frequencies that were pre-programmed on the T1. Now, the one thing I was interested in here was to see uh, the power output of the radio as I was only getting about just over half a mile on it. So uh, we went had a look at that, but there are two settings. It just says high and low and my radio was already preset by Gary to high like me you've never programmed one of these little radios before well thankfully the 9100 software is pretty intuitive it's quite easy to use all you need to do is you go online you find the eight PMR frequencies copy and paste them straight into the programs on the channels that you wish to use finally I did have one little issue in getting the software to program back to the radio but perhaps that was me being a bit sort of stupid because when you install the 9100 software it does remember which COM port or USB port you use to plug in the radio and I'd plugged it into a different port on the laptop but once I used the same port for the whole operation it went quite smoothly. It appears that people prefer to use Chirp when they program these PMR radios. Now originally I said that the T1 wasn't compatible with Chirp, but I did a little bit more digging and it appears I may have been wrong now because it does look like that it's now included on the Chirp list. Another question that's come up a couple of times is whether or not this radio is in fact a true dual band radio. Will it work on VHF as well? as UHF. So I did a bit more digging around on this and it appears the answer is both yes and no. It, the software will program the radio to use on the VHF frequencies but however the built-in antenna is tuned to UHF. 
So the reality of the situation is, yes, the radio appears it can be programmed to transmit and receive on two meters, but the range is going to be pretty limited due to the antenna problem. Now, there are some mods available online. People like to take these radios apart and they've gone in and there's various things you can do to retune the antenna. Is that really worth it? Well, I don't know. Maybe uh, not something I would want to do. Right, we're going to bring this one to a close. We've gone past the 10 minute mark. So when I get the messages, people saying, well, Fred, you know, is this really worth £13? Well, the answer is yes and no. If you've not got a PMR radio and you don't want to go to the extra expense of the UV5R, well, look for other radios in the range. Certainly the Bofang Treble 8 is a very, very competent radio. It hasn't got a display and you do need to program it with your computer, but it will give you a better range and better performance another thing is a charging cable people have come back and said well, Fred the cable costs more than the radio well no it doesn't there's always people that are going to try and exploit you on eBay but you can get the charging cable for less than four pounds delivered of course it makes sense to buy at the same time you buy the radio anyway I hope this video has helped you if you've never programmed a radio before like me I hope this helps you get through some of the uh, pitfalls you might fall across and like I said before the radio is only the cost of a price of a pizza maybe it's a little bit more than beer money but then again if you buy your beer in London well <laughs> maybe not anyway cheers thanks for watching and I'll catch you all on the next one stay safe <laughs>